Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Music of the Week. Yeah, I know, um, not super soon after the last one, I think it was like last week when I did it, because it's usually on Mondays for some reason. I'm just rambling, but, um, got five albums for this one, thank you to everyone who watched the, um, Void the Night review I did yesterday, so, yeah, got five albums for this episode, um, let's just go, let's just go. We start off in Rhode Island for a band with the debut, another one down with their first full album, A Bitter Descent. Um, so I heard, like... Some bits and bobs of this in like the week leading up to it when I was like searching for music because I wanted to push some stuff back for December, so that left me with, left me with fewer albums to listen to. And I was like, I want to pad out to at least five for the weekend, and this was sort of a last minute addition in a way, and really enjoyed it. I think this is a really solid bit of pop punky debut stuff. I'm giving it a B. Um, it does follow a lot of the tropes, but um, much like Settle Your Scores uh, with their previous album, it does sort of like fit that niche really well, but it does some pretty unique things with it. Um, I think this was just really good stuff, though, for another one down, and I am looking forward to what they drop next. There's really good musicianship. There's pretty good production as well in places for an album like this, and yeah, um, I do have over them. Next up, we have another debut full length Felicity with their first album, Dear Universe. Uh, these guys hail from Orlando, Florida. And um, they've only dropped one thing before this. I don't know if another one down drops an EP before, but Felicity did drop an EP titled Old Habits. And I haven't listened to that. This is my first full taste of Felicity. That sounds weird without context, but. <laughs> but this album. I'm just thinking about it, it's still laughing. <laughs> this album is really good. I'm keeping this in, fuck it. I'm giving this album an A+, by the way. Really, really enjoyed. <laughs> I'm just thinking about it more in my head. Really enjoyed uh, how this album came out. It's, again, a very sort of pop punky album. There's a bit more of a hardcore element to it than there was to another One Down's album, which I just talked about not too long ago in this very video, in fact. And... Really, um, just really good shit, honestly. I like how dynamic it feels in terms of its presentation. Solid production, uh, really good lyrics as well, really relatable. And the performances are goddamn solid. There's a lot more heavy work for a pop punk album than there should be. There's really good elements of, like, some sort of pop rocky stuff that works really well. There's good alt rock elements, there's good post hardcore elements, and it all works really well. And it ends on a really high note with the final song, Sailor V, which is a really great closing song. So, yeah, I'd recommend giving this one a shot. Next we go to the only non-American band on this list, um, Idols, with their fourth album, Crawler. They're from Bristol, England, I should have pointed out, but yes, Idols, they drop stuff pretty frequently. They have been since Brutalism, and um, I don't count their live album in 2019 because, you know, uh, I like I like original studio material, spoiler alert, but it's Idols as well. I fucking love Idols. They've had a pretty much flawless career, and this album, yeah, definitely another one. Um, worth adding to their greatest stuff. Um, well, all the albums with the greatest stuff, giving this album an A. Um, it takes another look at them sort of more personally, much like Joy's and Act of Resistance did, and it goes to a lot of places with the musical styles it tries to add in as well. Really good. Like, the usual noise punk stuff is there, the usual sort of like hardcore, but there's more of a hardcore vibe to this, which I really, really enjoyed. And it's got, like, again, that sort of emotional feeling that they can bring out. Joe Talbot really brings that out in his own vocals because he still, he still bites and yelps as one of the best British punk vocalists going today. And, um, yeah, he's just great. Everyone's great. I love Mark Bowen's guitar work. This might be Mark Bowen's best performance as a guitarist for me, personally. But everyone's great. Really love the production. Obviously, Partizan is a great label, and I think they need to stick with them because they've given them really good stuff to work with. So, yeah, um, uh, another one I would recommend, absolutely. You don't need me to tell you that Idols are great, because they absolutely fucking are, and this album is a perfect example of that. Really enjoyed how it's structured, really well put together, really good usage of its time as well, and just, yeah, fills out really nicely, and is great, as Idols often are. Next up, we go to jolly old Jacksonville, Florida, with Limp Bizkit and their sixth album, I have it right here, her sixth album, and their first in ten years titled Still Sucks, or as I like to give it the full title, Limp Biscuit Still Sucks. So, yeah, um, basically waited ten fucking years for this. They were obviously in development hell with the whole Stampede of the Disco ele uh, Elephants thing, and they broke from their last label. And none of the songs that they released as singles for Studio uh, Stampede of the Disco Elephants were on this album at all. But this album, despite being called Still Sucks, is 
pretty good, a lot better than I thought it would be. I'm giving it a B. I um, really enjoyed it. I think one of the things that does take away from it from me is the usual thing that takes away from a lot of Limp Bizkit albums, which is Fred Durst. Like, the the band would be so much better off without him and his ego and his white boy angsty rap yelling. But... Wes Borland is a great guitarist, Sam Rivers is a great bassist, John Otto can fucking slam the drums, and DJ Lethal is... He lives up to his stage name, you know? his He lives up to the DJ part and the Lethal part. But yeah, really well put together. Very short as well, so it's not, like, overly done, which is something I was worried it was going to be, because it like, ten fucking years since that last one. But still, an oddly enjoyable, uh, fun album. And from band to, like... Again, I only have that one problem, which is the person fronting them. Well, having said that, it turned out a lot better than I thought it would, so I would probably still recommend it. And even Fred isn't enough to really ruin the experience for me, even if his lyrics have not improved at all. And finally, we go to Azusa, California. I swear, Azusa sounds like a made-up place for Silent Planet with their fourth album, Iridescent. Now, I caught their last album when they began, and I really liked it. And I was anticipating this one. It's their first one in about three years. I think it might be the longest album gap. I'll have a look really quick. I was right, go me. So yeah, their first album since 2018. And really super enjoyed it. These are a great prog metal quarry act. And I'm giving this album an A. Uh, yeah, very positive episode this one has been. So really enjoyed a lot of the like musical dynamics as well. The uh, guitarist Mitchell Stark fantastic stuff uh lead singer Garrett russell still absolutely kills it like his clean vocals have come a long way as well like the fact that this is the first album where he's where he's really tried to add them in and he still sounds really good with it and yeah i just genuinely enjoyed a lot of this it can feel maybe a tiny bit disjointed in places but it does patch itself up really well great musicianship really smart songwriting <clears throat> and again like they're a christian labeled band that don't do the whole Christian thing, they actually like want to sing stuff that they think is pertinent and most of it works, you know and there's really good focus on mental health as a lyrical theme, which I always enjoy, it's one of the things I bring up a lot in bands like this and it's something I enjoy uh, hearing about and like reading through lyrics too if I can find them, because I can't always do that um, not, not that I don't want to, it's just like the internet isn't always going to provide that information for me having said that though, yes, um, rambling aside you should listen to this album, really produced well too, as you'd expect from an album on Solid State and UNFD, which are really good labels. I think Solid State is like a very consistent Christian, um, tangentially adjacent label. So, yeah, that aside, I ramble, yes, uh, find album, this album, good, listen. And that'll about do it, that's five albums all covered and done. The albums I'd recommend the most, probably all of them, actually, I think they were all really, really great. Um, there's a chance only one of the ones I sort of gave an 8-ish rank to could be in my top 30 because I've still got to, got to work on that at some point, but, you know, I've got it until after December 3rd to really start doing it, and then that's going to be my last episode of Music of the Week anyway, so... I mean, the, the albums that sort of I'm covering around that time, you know what I mean. But, yeah, um, I would listen, I would listen, I would recommend mostly, um... Felicity with D Universe Idols with Crawler and Silent Planet with Iridescent. But, you know, give Limp Bizkit's new album and another one down's debut a go as well because they're both pretty decent in their own right. As for what's next from me, um, well, the uh, PBW vs. AVW tomorrow night. That's about it. I don't really have many other plans. If I can cobble it together, I'll get another Music of the Week episode out before the weekend pops up. I can't promise anything, but I'll see you all for that. And yeah, that'll about do it. And oh, also a Friday night gaming stream of me playing a bit more Psychonauts. And as always, thank you for watching. You're awesome. Bye bye.